You're listening to The Dental Guys, episode 114, How a Dental Lab Responds to a Crisis, featuring Brad and Andy of the Dental Crafters Network. In this episode, we discuss how the shutdown has affected the lab industry, and we get personal with the lab in discussing how they're responding by printing PPE devices to help the medical profession. They next leveled this crisis. Find out more this week on The Dental Guys. Looking for a lab that understands the bridge between art and science? Check out the Dental Crafters Network. Dental Crafters, one relationship, infinite possibilities. Contact them at 1-800-472-8302 or at dentalcrafters.net. Do you want to learn to predictably place and restore dental implants using the most modern science and technology? We are talking 60 hours of CE in a comprehensive curriculum and live surgical implant placement on pre-selected patients. Head over to RestorativeDrivenImplants.com to learn more today. Well, and welcome to this week's episode of The Dental Guys. I'm Wes, The Dental Guy. And I'm John, The Dental Guy. Man, John, this, this, is, not, week. this is not the normal episode where we're going to be speaking about clinical things today, but we are still talking about the impact that this shutdown of the dental industry has had on not just dentists, but today, John, we have a very special guest, actually guests, right, that are joining us. Um, and John, why don't you introduce them to us and to our listeners? Yeah, you know, we've been focused on talking about dentists, and now today <clears throat> we're going to shift gears and talk about the lab industry. And so we've got from the Dental Crafters Network, uh, who most of you guys are familiar with, longtime sponsor of the show. Uh, we've got, got the owner, uh, Brad, with us, and uh, the general manager, Andy. Hey, guys. And uh, we're glad to have you guys here. Glad to be here again. Thanks, Thanks for having us on. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been, uh, you know, we've had, we've known these guys a long time. Uh, we, we know uh, what they're about, and, uh, you know, if anybody that's worked with them out there that listens to our show knows what they're about, and that is, you know, quality and uh, customer service. <clears throat> and that's a good place to start. Uh, you know, customer service. Uh, in, in the last, what, week, we've gone, maybe two weeks, we've gone from really hitting a pace that was breakneck. I mean, it, you guys were working like probably as hard as you've worked, I would guess, or close to it, with probably some hiring, trying to find people over the last couple of years. Talk about that and then talk about what's happened in your business over the last, you know, week, week and a half with that. Yeah, things changed a little bit, I huh, Andy. You know? Yeah, things. we uh, we set some records in February. Yeah, sales records. Ourselves. And you're right, we were doing everything we could to, you know, just make sure the quality was there and, and we, you know, maintain good high level of customer service. Finding people, like you said, John, was it was a challenge. I mean, I think everybody, not even just the dental sector, but everybody was looking for good people. And uh, yeah, we came to a screeching halt, roadblock. <laughs> kind of like the, yeah. the rest of the listeners out there. For sure. Yeah. Describe that day for us. Like yeah. what, when was that? And actually, what was your initial reaction and kind of how the day went down? You know, I guess my original, I started a little bit earlier because I have two kids in college. So, you know, when they started launching, the you know K through 12 schools were closed, and then my two kids that are in college, uh, they got early spring breaks. They shut down and started getting advising that they're going to go to online. That was uh, I think last well, a week ago Tuesday. I think was the first indicator for me. Um, then I knew we were heading into a spiral, and that was going to start coming down to the work sector. But then when they the ADA came out with the, the three week recommendation. Um, you know, we were pretty proactive. Andy, mm -hmm. you want to talk about, you know, how we acted on that? Yeah, I'll be say in Bob's absence too, we were kind of on top of the ball. Even before the universities and the school districts stopped closing, we were fortunate enough to have some attention on it. Um, so we had assembled employees. We put in extra layers of uh, PPE, uh, extra layers of hygiene on the inbound cases, making sure everything's sterilized. We started closing the lab down at 1.30 every day so that we did a thorough cleaning of everything, common areas, production area. Um, and, you know, ultimately, and we'll get to that in conversation, the communication with the employees, you know, made last week a little easier. Um, they kind of knew what was coming because we were communicative with them the whole time. 
Um, so those are the, the steps we kind of took. What it, but it had to feel like on the actual day, it had to feel like, I imagine, like a stock market crash being a trader on the floor because you're getting calls, right? And tell me, tell us what that was kind of like and, and what, what was happening and how that, how that affected the yeah, I would the say even, even ahead of the ADA uh, bulletin, we were getting calls from doctors saying, you know, it's either my state is, is, is issued the bulletin saying we should shut down or I'm gonna shut down voluntarily. Um, here's what to do with my cases. So, you know, John, you mentioned customer service. Customer service was the first to hear a lot of that here for us and clearly then they articulated that back to management so we kind of knew how to act yeah, and all you, as you guys know there was a lot of confusion state to state so you know our the direct conversations i was having with the dentist was what is everybody else doing you know what is it what is a considered emergency patient what isn't you know is our are is everybody closing are they not closing what are they saying what are they putting on their door you know um so you know because we're pretty good at that customer service side and helping our customers think past the dental side um they were using us as an advisory committee to help them think through it and it was it was kind of a panic mm -hmm. the first day. it's interesting to hear that i want to just maybe focus on that for a second you, you're saying that dentists were calling you for guidance on what to do. And, I, and I, I really wanna dwell on that for a second because that's not typically what a lot of people think about a dental lab uh, as being a resource for that. What, why is that? Why are people calling you? I, just the relationships that we develop throughout the customers, they trust us, you know, they know we're more than just a dental laboratory. And they also know we have a reach to multiple dentists across the states. So that, I think that gives us an advantage that they kind of wanted to know what's going on in South Dakota versus Tennessee versus Colorado. And, you know, is this coming stronger, you know, to our states? And, um, so I, they knew we had a, a bigger reach, I think, uh, to the dental, yeah. dental network. Wow. So you're literally advising as best you can, hey, at least I heard this today from this guy or this lady. And so while you can't obviously know you're not the authority. No, not at all. But you're kind of just sharing information as you get it during that day. I bet you were on the phone all day. I, yeah, for about three days. And I would never claim to be the authority because I'm not making these rules. Um, but exactly, John. You know, so I was asking you and Wes, you know, hey, whatever you're seeing from Tennessee, what you're seeing from Ohio, send those to me. You know, I'd read it. I would forward those out and saying, hey, here's what other states are doing. Just keep an eye on it. You know, keep an eye on your state. Um, just it kept everybody in our network somewhat informed of how the U.S. is kind of working uh, individually, I guess, state to state, but it was helping them think what they want to do. And it was helping them make their decision, which ultimately that's what it is, is their decision of how they act on it, what they do. Because again, it was a recommendation. So, it wasn't a force mandate uh, from the ADA. Right. So as the week progressed and, you know, dentists were receiving either recommendations from their individual boards or they were turning to you know people like you for hey what have ever what's everybody else doing do we follow the ADA those type things as that week progressed at what point did you see like how was the case influx like from day to day like you guys have a real good metric I've been to your to your lab it's all very metric driven as far as case coming in cases going out I've seen those numbers on the on the <coughs> boards there not necessarily the case, but percentage wise, how, how did that, how did that tank or did it tank? Yeah. Um, so obviously we're getting the cases a couple of days after you guys are sending the prep in or, or the input for it. So, um, the, you know, the regression went negative about Wednesday, but not very severely negative. Um, we weren't impacted materially probably until yesterday morning on the inbound. Mm. Um, mm. and the other thing to keep in mind is even though we, I think we, we do a really good job with throughput and lead time. Um, so, you know, we chew through work in progress pretty quickly. Um, there was enough work to pretty much have everybody still on as of Friday. Um, and we still have some of that left on the shop floor to get through with the crew that we've got left this week. Um, still receiving mm -hmm. some cases, but you know, it's probably a two thirds reduction in our normal case volume as of right now and still wow. trending. Hmm. Now, do you guys operate on a just-in-time manufacturing philosophy? That's one of the things John and I have been talking about behind the scenes is that all manufacturing, at least to some extent, is we see what we've got coming in 
and we know what we need to order and it's very like a narrow time period that's what just in time is are you all operating that way and how's that you know changed? it's it's tough for us you guys have a forecast because you develop your own schedule so you see you know two three six months ahead we don't right so our snapshot is when the case shows up at our doorstep so we try to do just in time manufacturing so we don't keep a lot of stuff on the uh, on the shelf so we do a lot of analytics to make sure we keep you know the money in the checkbook if you would versus stock on the on the shelves but our our snapshot is short right so we have to act pretty quick mm -hmm. so we'll do weekly orders we don't order for 30 days we'll just order every week more often get more boxes in constantly smaller orders um, and negotiate with our suppliers, you know, as a whole within an annual year, what our consumption is. Um, so they'll help us kind of forecast what our ordering is, like Zirconia is a high, you know, a high user for us. So they'll kind of look at our annual usage, give us discounting off of that, but then we'll get monthly orders shipped based off of that quantity. So interesting to hear, you know, <clears throat> that helps you, I would think, because you don't have a ton of inventory sitting on shelves as much as maybe it would have been, you know, five years ago or whenever you made that change. Um, and it seems like that's helping a lot of businesses right now, because obviously when things screech to a halt, the worst thing you can have is a bunch of unused inventory, which you have no nothing to do about. The, the bad thing about that is how that's hurting for the things we really need right now in the healthcare industry because we don't have a warehouse full of 10 million N95 masks sitting outside because we, you know, we, did, we don't buy like that anymore. And uh, so there's good and bad to that strategy. So uh, at the same time, you saw the cases dropping. I'm sure you had to make some real tough decisions about your people, right? And, and I mean, is that, that's got to have been one of the most, you know, I mean, how, how do you deal with that? Yeah, I tell you, I'll be honest with you guys, incredibly emotional. You know, you, as you guys know, you build your team. Your team is your family. I mean, I, you know, we, you spend a lot of time with your team members here and uh, extremely emotional. Um, like Andy said earlier, we saw it come and we started communicating instantly, having team meetings with the whole company, letting them know what's going on, what we know, what we think is going to happen. Um, so they were mentally preparing themselves. And, uh, you know, then we started looking at versatility within a company of what individuals had the best versatility to, can they scan, can they design, can they, you know, grind on metal, can they stack porcelain, you know, what, what is their versatility? And we started looking at uh, a, a skeleton crew, if you would, or a crew that had the high versatility and then unfortunately had to start um, doing temporary layoffs for, for some people and about two thirds of our staff. We, we actually laid off pretty early to keep a little bit of a work in progress on the floor. So the, the crew that we do have, um, you know, that's what we're working on this week yet uh, to yeah, keep them. Trying to maximize the use of the ones that you have there so they're not just sitting around. Uh, yeah, I get it. Because, yeah, because you could have gone from keep everybody as long as possible and all of a sudden it's just zero uh, versus try to, like, trend down. I'm sure that, that those discussions, uh, I mean, there's just, we, we've had to have some of the same discussions, obviously, in our offices. And um, yeah, this is, your, this is your family and your friends. Um, you spend more time with them sometimes than your actual family, right. you know, when it really comes down to it. So to, to look somebody in the eye and say, you know, I'm sorry, but we just don't have the work right now. I mean, you know, it's the right thing to do. It's, it's but you have to do it, yeah, yeah. but it's, it's just a, Man, it's the, I mean, we've never had to deal with anything like this before. You know, in the 34 years now I've been doing this and, you know, we've had some recessions with some other economical things or economy things, but to hit the, the medical sector, I mean, this is a virus, so it really hit directly into medical. Obviously, first time in my career, first time for you guys, you're a little younger than I am, but I don't think, like everybody, we weren't prepared for mm -hmm. this, you know. Um, type of thing to react so quickly to. Um, but, you know, I think we're all in it together, you know, the, you know, to make everybody else feel good about their, you know, the dentists uh, that are out there, it really stinks that you have to sit home for two, three, however many weeks this is going to be and to do those hard layoffs. Um, but we had to do the same. You know, we rely on the income. Our income is from you guys. You know, the doctors that are out there paying our, paying the bills to us is what we live off of. And you know we're like you as we're trying to conserve cash as best we can uh, to pay the people that we have yep. and make smart decisions, keep our inventory low, 
Um, our fear is on the swing side, when this thing comes to an end, how do you ramp up? You know, yeah. to make sure that and talk- we just got off, we, we just got off of a podcast talking about that is one of the things that we need to prepare for is the phase of actually restarting. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And it's something that you need to go ahead and start working on your action plan of how you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. Speak to that, like starting back up again, right, whenever that may be, and how you're all going to maybe tackle some of those tasks. Well, I tell you, a lot of the dentists I've been talking to, um, they're talking five days a week minimum, six days a week, evenings, make uh, care accessible uh, to, you know, to get back in and service the customers as long as they're there. You know, as long as our economy doesn't go too far down, we're hoping the income is there that they're gonna come back in and you know, get done what they need to have done. So assuming that happens, we just talked about inventory. That's, you know, John, like you said, a little bit of the negative of you know, running lean or in, just in time inventory, because all of a sudden if our flow you know, triples when we turn this faucet back on, we're hoping our vendors are there and they have the stuff sitting on the shelf so that they can supply us with the product that we need to manufacture. Um, so, you know, that's some discussions we're going to start having with our suppliers. Um, and then obviously we got to pay our staff to come back in. You know, the team members that we're pulling back in, uh, we have to pay their payroll. So there's cash that we need to do that. Andy, you want to talk a little bit about what we're doing there? Well, and I think I can sidestep a little bit too. I mean, most, most important for us is getting all the people back that are on temporary layoff. Um, so that where I think we were successful in communication for the you know, week or two that led up to the decision point, we need to carry that forward. And I would, you know, I think it's a good thing for conversation for the listeners too, is, you know, you, have, you might have a few people home, but touch base with them text them every once in a while, see how they're doing, see how their family's doing. Cause that kind of stuff goes a long mm. way. You know, and I think it's natural more or less here to do that kind of stuff. But you know, we're reminding all the supervisors that are left to do the same thing with their folks, because honestly, I mean, we're in central Wisconsin. Um, one of our longtime technician has called this the dental tech desert, right? We're, <laughs> we're, we're not uh, recruiting from schools. All this is on the job training. So every one of those people that our family, our extended family friends, uh, they also represent a heck of an investment that we've made in them in training. So we need to get all mm-hmm. those folks back. Um, that's so good. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, that, that's so good. And I think even in the big cities, it's a struggle. It you know, finding finding and training technicians from everything we've heard is is a huge struggle. But especially when you don't have this massive workforce, um, you know, who's who's there. Yeah, to, to find and train. I mean, it's similar in my, like where I'm at. I'm in a small town America to train a dental, you know, hire and train a dental assistant or, or a front office team member to understand dental insurance. And, and, and I mean, th- this is, this is you, you are not getting these people coming in knowing anything. And mm-hmm. so you have to have them back uh, because you just can't, not only is it hard to train and the amount of money and time, but it, you don't have time for that. If things do turn on, uh, you know, you can't just call your patient and say, sorry, you know, we can't see you today. It's just not an option. I know you guys are feeling the same thing. Talk, talk about um, the change in like the lab industry over the last, I don't know, 10 years, you guys would know better than I do, has become so digital and equipment centric. You have to make, if you want to keep up, you got to make big investments in equipment and technology. And all these things cost a ton of money most labs, if I understand correctly, are not buying a lot of these things outright. You're leasing them over time, or you're you know financing them. I would think you guys have got a lot of just you know cons- things you got to cover, similar to what we do in some ways. Uh, I'm sure that you guys have had some discussions happening with uh, some of those people this week too, right? Yeah, and I'll talk about you know the equipment we have in the lab side. I'll let Andy talk about how we handle it financially, but. Um, yeah, correct. You know, five axis milling machines. We actually just brought one online here two months ago, mm-hmm. brand new five axis milling machine from Germany. Um, so yeah, we had to buy that. We have, you know, 3d printers, scanners, computers, um, everything is high tech. You're absolutely right. The capital investment to run a laboratory, uh, digitally is it's increased over the last 10 years. And I think it's going to continue to increase. Um, so you know, we haven't done a lot of leasing. Where there's only we work with one company. And most of you have heard of Carbon. Um, it's, it's a it's basically a, a lease payment or subscription type. 
Uh, they were online yesterday. We were talking about how you know we as manufacturers can do personal protective equipment manufacturing, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But uh, the good thing about Carbon is they stepped up the bat and they forgave our lease payment uh, or didn't forgive it. They extended it. So for 30 days, we don't have to make uh, a one month lease payment. So they extended that out. So some companies are stepping up on the lease side of things. Um, and then most of the other stuff we purchase, we've financed out through a, you know, a, a loan. Um, and Andy, you can talk a little yeah. bit about that. So whether you're you know, financing lease payment or if you've got an equipment loan from the bank, <laughs> we have a mortgage too on this facility. And um, uh, I'll say this, uh, reach out to your bank. Um, we are fortunate to be partnered with one heck of a regional bank um, from our area that has made some concessions to help to help along for the next 90 days um, now those you know the interest still accrues and we're gonna have to pay them you know as soon as possible but you know if they can buy it 90 days it's certainly worth a phone call to talk to your you know relationship banker and see what they can do um, so the, you know those are things like on the equipment end, the facilities end that that we've been able to take advantage of yeah. You, you guys always spend a lot of time talking about you know big corporation versus small corporation, and I've learned in the last week in the banking industry that is also true. Um, my personal side, I, I have a mortgage through a large bank, uh, nationwide bank, and uh, they're a little bit cheaper in their interest rate than our local bank that we deal with here on the company side. Um, and when I called them to ask if they do anything on the loan side for mortgage, they basically said, yeah, we'll give you a, a, a 90 day, but it's accrued interest uh, during that time. And then at the end of the 30 days, uh, excuse me, 90 days, you have to make the full payment of all three months. So interest, the payment, everything. Well, you know, I still got to come up with that lump sum, you know, in, in 90 days versus our local bank that was a smaller bank basically said interest only. And uh, you know you don't have to make the full payment on the principal amount. Um, that kind of separates to me. I learned a lot in the last week on banking. Of I might uh, end up staying with a little more small regional banks, even if they yeah. might be a percent higher. Uh, I'm sorry, a quarter of a percent higher or half percent higher. There's some advantages. Well, I think. What's interesting with all this manufacturing power, we're seeing a lot of industry step up and retool maybe their or repurpose their manufacturing power across the United States to provide some much needed things. There's some companies that are like Hanes, I think I heard was repurposing some factories to make N95 masks because we don't stockpile some of these things for a worst case scenario. We are seeing certain factories that even can make respirators that they we didn't even know about. And so, Brad, you mentioned something earlier, uh, some things that you're doing in your community, uh, one, and number two, um, you're using some of your tools there, your machines to be able to, to make some things. Tell us a little bit about that. I tell you, you know, another goosebump uh, for me that, you know, you kind of get that shiver up your spine is when you start talking about people across America and how they have stepped up and they want to help. And, you know, dental laboratories are manufacturers. That's what we do. You know, we have all the high tech equipment. Um, so we reached out locally. There's a Marshall Clinic here locally. And the personal protective equipment that they asked us to help with would be the face shields, the face shield masks. Um, so we instantly went out and, you know, online there's a ton of STL files, manufacturing files that we just downloaded. My engineering team actually drew up two different versions. Um, the gentleman from the Marshall Clinic is going to come today and review them, but we printed this yesterday. Yeah, and this if you're is basically to this. A, yeah, if you're listening to this. Yeah, describe and, uh, it, Brad. Describe what you're yeah, holding describe for people that are right, listening. Right, because if you're, so, yeah. if you're, yeah, hold on just a minute, right? Got to plug our YouTube channel. Here. Right, right. <laughs> right? Because if you're listening to this and you didn't know, we have a YouTube channel, and this is a great opportunity for you to head over there right now because Brad is holding something. Brad, describe what you're holding right there. So, you know, you all know what personal protective equipment is for a face shield, right? So it's just a piece of plastic that hangs in front of your face. Um, so this is basically the headband that we 3D printed that would hold the face shield. Um, so we were able to print this on our 3D printers. 
Um, we uh, sourced some Velcro ourselves. And marine um, grade vinyl. Yep, marine grade vinyl is what our local clinic <laughs> said that they wanted marine grade vinyl for the uh, front uh, protective. Um, but it basically is 3D printed headpiece. Um, so by the end of this week, we're going to start supplying uh, as many as we can of these to our local area clinic. Um, so it's, you know, that's, that's awesome. how fast we could ramp up. It's how fast we could retool in our manufacturing side of things. So, you know, not just being dental, you know, we can make a lot of different things either out of metal or out of plastic. That's amazing. Is, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's awesome to hear that, you know, I mean, I've, I'm seeing, you know, already STL is showing up for face masks. There was, there's a guy out there who's, uh, 3d printing them and then border molding, uh, the face mask <laughs> with uh, VPS to get a, the best seal. Uh, and then using a HEPA filtration from a uh, Craftsman shop, a shop back. back. I think it was you rigid. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, I was awesome. like, man. But th this is what the innovation that's coming out of and retooling that's coming out of, of small business and big business. It makes me proud of our country and the response that we are seeing uh, and other countries too. I mean, we're seeing other countries donating stuff to us, you know, including healthcare workers uh, and materials. Um, and, and, you know, so, and you said carbon, the actual company was part, was kind of behind some of that, right? Yeah, we had a, they had a pod or not podcast, but a webinar. a webinar yesterday that they went over just this on how carbon and their network um, and their different types of materials that they're able to print with can really step up as a network. So that's going to be a continued development here pretty quick. Yeah. You know, um, they're also working on these face shields in addition to the swabs for the testing kit. Um, hmm. and I think are getting all the, the workflows kind of ironed out. Um, so the cool thing about carbon is that there's a lot of folks that have them, a lot of dental labs, so they can actually mobilize the whole network hmm. to hmm. Want, want those IF, once those IFUs are out and we can, produce quite a few of them that's uh, awesome as a network the swabs were something that in a dental lab business um it just looks like a q-tip but they're printing them out of plastic um so that's what they're going up in the nasal cavity and swabbing with um again instructions for use is kind of the hang up to make sure that we have the right resin the right curing process cleaning process um, but I think that's coming here in the next day or two yeah. with some you know advice for us and how we could print that and with our printing capability we could print thousands of those a day. you know really a day yeah. um, and really make a big impact for so the medical. what about what about this brad i know that you're you've been a provider of um, uh, continuing education for many years and you are the dental crafters network is a sponsor of restorative driven implants which is uh, an implant continuum that john and i've been a part of since the um, since the beginning and we had a you said we had a stockpile right of ppe stuff tell us a little bit about what you were able to do with that we did the same thing uh you know we had opac uh you know which has masks and gloves within the opac uh, we had mm -hmm. gloves we had some masks uh quite a number of them mm -hmm. we again contacted the local marshfield clinic here and they sent somebody to us uh, with a huge thank you and took those goods back to uh, their awesome. facility to be used uh, as they are needed yeah, so we, and I, I love to hear. I mean, this is, you know, this is what um, it's kind of all about right now, you know, and I think that that's the thing that no matter um, how long we're out, no matter what, I mean, I think that it we're going to see relationships here uh, becoming stronger between businesses and people uh, in a way that that I think is really positive for our country and for our industry. We're seeing you know, dentistry helping out the medical field. Um, we're seeing industry helping out the medical field. We're seeing people sacrificing, you know, and it's interesting, we, won't, we don't wanna get political on this, but we'll just say, you know, I think that there's not really been something like this in maybe a very long time in our nation that's truly made people sac have to sacrifice. And, right. you know, it brings out kind of who you really are during this time, you know, and so I love to see that you guys are just like, hey, here's, who, here's what we're about. You know, how can we help? How can we contribute? Uh, and, and that's that spirit of just hard work. Um, so uh, what do you think in the long run, you know, when, when you start ramping back up, I wanna just maybe ask one more question about that. Um, 
you know, when you start ramping back up, and how, how do you guys think you're going to handle bringing people back? Do you feel like it's going to be something where you're going to have to do it the same way of just kind of see what's coming into the lab and see kind of what, what you're getting and then start adding back as, as the caseload goes up? Or do you feel like it's going to be a way that you can anticipate that somehow? Is, or is that sounds like such a difficult decision. You know, it's none of us have a crystal ball to know what's going to happen. You know, uh, it all depends on how long the dental shutdown is. Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be the biggest question. The longer everybody's shut down, I think the longer it's going to take everybody to fire back up. If this is just going to be another, you know, two, three weeks, you know, I would anticipate a pretty fast incline um, of things coming back online. And then we have hopes of bringing everybody back, you know, pretty quickly. And some of that also depends on some of the government loans that are out there. You know, we've been looking at the SBA loan also, um, you know, bringing our staff back and, uh, you know, get them back on the payroll. If uh, there's some government programs, we'll look at tapping it. We are looking at tapping into those now, and that will make a decision of how fast we bring everybody back on because it's kind of a gamble. You know, we don't want to be understaffed, but I don't want to be overstaffed either. Yep. Mm. Yep. What would you say to um, dental offices, dental practices right now as to how they need to be looking at their business? during this time. I know that you're not a, you know, dental business advisor per se, but you've seen and you've known, you guys have both known the industry for a long time. You have a ton of experience that's sitting there uh, in this room. And what would you tell the dentists that you work with or just dentistry in general about what to be thinking about, what to be preparing for? What, what, what words do you have for the dentists out there? First of all, now's the time where you can look at your systems, you can look at your operation. Um, how can you streamline it? How can you make yourself better? You're down for two, three, four, whoever know how, you know, we don't know how many weeks, but now's the opportunity of, you know, drawing up those manuals you always been wanting to provide in your office, the operating procedures, um, maybe thinking about diversifying your what you offer to your doctors. Um, you know, of course, you know, we are part of a sponsor of the RDI. Now is the time to be looking at maybe offering dental implants in your practice. Um, you know, how do you get educated for that to create another revenue source for you or ortho or whatever you want to expand your practice into? Now's the time to be looking at it. So when you fire back up, you have another revenue uh, stream that you can bring to your practice. So good, John, because I think it kind of echoes what we just heard. Um, some of our advisors give uh, advice is to work on efficiencies, uh, work on you know streamlining processes, look at how you're doing things right now, and then look at opportunities, right? Because there's going to be an opportunity mm -hmm. for those that are planning. And if you're not a, if you're not planning, then you're going to miss out on an opportunity. And I think it's really great advice. Yeah, this has been this has been encouraging though. You know, I mean, yes, it's bad. We got shut down, and the you know it's kind of like we're unsure. But ending on this note, that innovation comes sometimes in the worst situations, mm -hmm. and it is I think it's awesome that you're <laughs> able to take some of that manufacturing capability and turn it into some good immediately, right? Some things that we actually need, and locally. Uh, able to to just help out there in your own town at that clinic. So, I mean, hats off to you guys and the Dental Crafters Network for uh, what you guys are doing there. And um, I know that John and I send our prayers to you guys and uh, really um, hope that this is a short thing, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's what we're all hoping for is we're hoping it's short. I think everyone, I'll speak for John, needs to do their part in stopping the spread of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, I don't speak for Brad or Andy, but uh, John and I, you know, shut down our offices as soon as we heard that the American Dental Association made the recommendation. So um, I think that as we see in the coming weeks, hopefully we have um, helped in flattening this curve. Yeah. And but we're in it together. Stress. And I think that's the yeah. thing that we're hearing, you know, is that we're in it together with not only our offices, our teams, but with the lab industry, you know, and, and you guys are, are truly, you know, just an extension <clears throat> of our practice. I mean, that's how we've always looked at it. That's how you guys 
have looked at it. Not all labs are like that, you know, but, <clears throat> but the labs that do focus on quality and customer service, uh, I mean, that's why people called you for three days straight is because they, they trust that you guys have more to offer than just a, a crown. Uh, or just right. an implant uh, or something like that. And I think that that's, that speaks volumes. Uh, you know, the people that I, I've always heard it said, you know, that the people that uh, when crisis hits, you know, the, the people that, that everybody wants to talk to, those are the people that typically, uh, you know, care the most about doing the right thing, you know, because mm -hmm. people want to know what's the right thing to do. And that's what partnership is all about in this business that we're in is you know figure out who your partners are and i think this is the time when you really figure that out you know who's who's in it for the right reasons and who's doing it right to try to you know continue that relationship business <clears throat> and i think all of us are feeling the same things as far as our wanting to you know bring our people back and care for our patients and and you know provide what we can for for our our people and their families first really and and for you know our patients and their well-being um, so I'm positive about this I think everybody's worried but I think that in the end you know if as long as we have that kind of spirit of working together we're, we're gonna we're gonna be okay mm -hmm. I agree you know I think that's the main focus right now we've never seen this before it's a virus we don't know you know the long terms of this and how long it's gonna be around but you know the human race has always prevailed. And as long as we stick together and stay focused on doing our part and uh, you know, keep a separation. But I'm hoping that we continue to look at humanity through this. Um, I hope we don't drive you know, wedges between people and you know, I don't, everybody's thinking the same thing when you're walking through the grocery store and you're trying to you know, maintain some separation of you know, do I say hello or don't I? Um, we're still people and we're, you know, just don't forget about humanity. Do the right thing. If you know friends and family that may need help, make sure you reach out by telephone and make sure they don't, you know, do they need groceries? Can you help them any way? Doesn't mean you have to go into their house, but there's a lot of things you can do to help people and um, just stay human because we're going to get through it together and, and it's all going to be good at the end. Mm. That's well, a good word. if you're listening to this um, and you've liked what you've heard, we, first of all, we really appreciate uh, the Dental Crafters Network and their longtime sponsorship of the Dental Guys. They have been a probably the they are the original, the OG sponsor <laughs> of the Dental Guys, and proud and, to be. And uh, we really appreciate you guys being a sponsor of our show, and we appreciate the collaboration that you've always given us. Um, we appreciate Brad, the Dental Lab Guy. <laughs> and uh, many of you know Brad, the dental lab guy. He's going to be coming on another episode and talking about some, actually, some clinical things um, very soon. If not, if it's not this, ep uh, the next episode will be the one after that. But stay tuned for that. That's going to be good. Uh, we're going to be talking about Lab Day, right? Before everything got shut down, Lab Day was going on um, in Chicago. And if you don't know what Lab Day is, well, you need to head on over to that next episode right now and uh, hear about what Brad is excited about. And we should get excited about it, too, because we will be going back to work. Yeah, now's okay? the time to learn. Now's the now's time, the time to, to learn. On what's so next? Get ready for that. That episode's going to be off the chain and going to be amazing because you all know Brad, the dental lab guy, has a heartbeat about what's going on in the dental world. And that's why so many people turn to the Dental Crafters Network. And so uh, this is a little bit of an ad for them. And that's, I'm not ashamed of that because we love the Dental Crafters yeah, Network. Yeah, they're doing it right, as you, can, as you right. can tell. And we want you to so, connect with them. Head over. Where can, where can they best find you guys? Yeah. You can uh, look at us up on web, check our website out, dentalcrafters.net. Um, we are out there on Facebook, uh, Twitter, Instagram, um, so pretty readily available. Cool. Well, if you uh, haven't uh, connected with them already, head over and check them out. Uh, give these guys a shot. I think you will not be disappointed. And as well, uh, connect with us on our social media outlets through Instagram, through Facebook, through the website. And of course, if you're listening on one of the podcast apps, such as Apple Podcasts, give us a five-star review. It makes all the difference of people finding out who we are and what we are all about. Uh, we're going to continue to bring you high-quality content just like this, even through the craziness of uh, the uh, coronavirus shutdown. So we're still here, 
and we got nothing to do but podcasts. So just keep tr- keep tuning in because we're going to keep pumping it out. So for Brad, for Andy, and for Wes, I'm John, and we are the Dental Guys. <laughs>